Good morning team, thanks for joining me again. Today's uh, quite a special one. Um, after my recent video about the 27mm 2.8 from TT Artisans, they've actually sent me the 56mm 1.8 for the Fujifilm setup. Now you can get this lens for E-mount and Z-mount, for Nikon, uh, for just APS-C cameras, so just your crop sensor cameras. If you've got a full frame camera, unfortunately, it's not gonna work. Um, but yeah, I've been testing this for a little while now uh, and I'm really enjoying this lens. Um, the biggest thing to note is the price. So before I knew this, you know, I was kind of maybe trying to dig into it a little bit, trying to work out, you know, its faults, its flaws, its, its, um, its unique um, kind of characteristics. And when I realized the price, it's $158 US. And that's a ridiculous price for any um, autofocus lens. Um, especially one as fast and as sharp as this. So that's kind of a, it's thrown a spanner in the works because you can make everything relative to something else. So obviously, um, relative to its competitors at $158, this is a incredible lens. But removing the price altogether, it still stands up against its competitors and even some higher end options. So the biggest thing to note here is it's Small and lightweight, so perfect for the uh, X-Series system. Obviously, I've got the grip on. I just like that bigger size and feel. So size isn't a thing for me, but I know for a lot of you, um, it is. And do mind me, me here, I've just got uh, battling the Sam fires this morning. Um, but yeah, 233 grams, it's nothing. It's tiny. And if you pair this with the 27mm in my last video, uh, you've got a really nice small size pack. Although it's only 233 grams, it is built really nice. So it's got that machine metal feel. Uh, so it feels like it's going to... <clears throat> stand the test of time um, and it feels nice and strong in the hands and again it just pairs so well with x-series cameras so i can't talk too much about nikon cameras or sony e-mount but for fujifilm this is a match made in heaven and if you wanted to buy something like a 27 mil 2.8 then you're really set to go you've got something kind of mid-short and you've got something a little bit longer now what i'm doing here is i'm just going to um use the top of the bushes here just to give it a bit of foreground um, at 1.8, which is what I'm shooting at the moment because the light is so dark, it's going to really soften the top of that edge um, and then it's just going to blur it into the, uh, the cabin or the hut in the background. So let's give this a go. It might be a bit tough because it's quite high, um, but I'm sure we'll get a good shot. Fortunately, it's quite difficult today. Uh, there's a lot of cars in the car park, so I'm having to try and cover them with some of the trees or the foliage just to kind of get rid of them. I don't really like taking cars and man-made objects out in, in post, so I'd rather try and do it in the shot. In terms of the design though, there are a couple of things I like and a couple of things I'm not so fond of. So X-Series is all about that tactile um, feel in the hand. So you've got you know buttons and dials and things like that. And a lot of their lenses have aperture rings. Unfortunately, this lens does not. Uh, that's something I did like about the 27mm 2.8 is it had that aperture ring, it fit the system and it made you feel like you really wanted to kind of use it and, um, and whatnot. So it does feel great in the hand and it's got that nice machine metal finish but it's just lacking that aperture ring. But again, at $158 US, is that something they left out in order to bring that price down? I'd say it probably is and it's something that, you know, given you're competing against Viltrox and a few other lens options, uh, it might have been a very smart choice to do so. Apart from the aperture ring though, I love the lens uh, look and feel and design. I would really like this square lens hood. I think it really matches the aesthetic um, of the Fujifilm system. It goes on nice and easy. The one thing though that does kind of fall short is the lens cap. You kind of have to take it off, unless I'm missing something, to put it on. Um, and, um, and then you've got this kind of sitting solo. So something like a stopper on top would have been nice just to protect the lens although i can't see anything getting in there anyway it should be fine so what i'm doing now i found this old dead tree here so i'm just going to silhouette it against the it's a decent sunrise it's not crazy um but it might just show the texture in the wood and um and just show off just how sharp this lens really is so let's um try and find a composition um because it is quite a messy one and see if we can Kind of try and um, break a bit of the the noise in the in the foreground and the midground away, so we can really showcase this dead tree. We'll see how we go.
and here's the thing in terms of sharpness for a $158 uh, lens is it's just incredible it really it's mind-blowing and Petapixel did a video about this um, a couple of weeks ago around how you could almost use a full set of third-party lenses as your professional camera system um, I'm not sure if um, TT artisans are there just yet if I was a um, you know if I'm a working professional would I go out and just buy TT artisan lenses I definitely maybe pick a couple out of those um, things for the look and the feel um, but I'm talking you know that kind of middle bracket of Sigma and Tamron are really doing a great job in that third party kind of upper end market um, and then you've got the kind of mid to budget uh, with Viltrox and uh, TT Artisans and Lauer and, and, and lens options like that and it's great for the consumer you know it's really putting pressure on a lot of these major brands to try and find cheaper ways to manufacture lenses um, and also give us other options as well because we don't always need the 24 to 70 2.8 at you know four thousand dollars so um, yeah it's, it's a great thing for the industry and you're not really lacking you're getting ED elements in this um, so it's keeping it extremely sharp um, and fast apertures as well so in terms of sharpness I've been extremely happy and I've obviously got some sample photos there to show you which is why I'm shooting these huts because there's a lot of um, grain and texture um, and detail in these um, so they should show up in some of the images 56 mil has a minimum focusing distance of uh, 50 centimeters or half a meter you can get super close to these guys and um, even at you know wide open it's um, it's extremely sharp and it absolutely obliterates the background super smooth background the flower remains you know relatively sharp um, but it gives you that um, ability with this lens to get nice and close and once again we found a lupin which um, to my knowledge are usually gone by this time of year but you know we'll take it um, so again I'm shooting a wide open here that really soft background I'm not too worried about the sharpness on the flower it's more about the feeling um, and that kind of airy soft um, kind of feeling which I think really kind of marries up with the subject so we're going to shoot that now um, and uh, see what that looks like but I'm um, really liking this lens And look, there's going to be a lot more people out there that are going to do, um, you know, portrait-based uh, reviews of this lens. And I'd go to their uh, reviews to look at things like autofocus. Uh, for me, most of my subjects are still. Um, I'm not using this to shoot wildlife. So, um, yeah, in terms of autofocus, for me, autofocus has been consistently good. Um, I have used this um, on a kind of personal portrait shoot. My partner also used it to take some headshots for myself uh, for an upcoming exhibition. Uh, so... Um, uh, and she's not somebody who uses um, a camera usually. So she was able to use eye detect and the lens worked flawlessly. So uh, for somebody who yeah, doesn't use camera gear and was able to pick it up and uh, really trust and rely on the system as a, as a separate unit, um, I think it performs extremely well. But again, look out for those reviews for somebody who's doing a dedicated portrait shoot as they'll be able to talk about it in greater depth. Alrighty, so we're here down by the uh, Arrow River and we've got one of the old mining huts in the background. So I'm still shooting at 1.8 to 2.8 um, as I want to see just how sharp this is wide open because a lot of people will be using this for portraits um, and things like that um, and great for obviously using low light. So I'm getting down low, trying to blur that background out into the kind of foreground, uh, sorry, into the mid-ground background which is going to be the mining cottage here and this is actually where they used to stay which is pretty dire given the sand flies um, and just how small and kind of primitive these cottages were. So um, I'll show you what I'm doing now. I'm um, getting nice and low, shooting quite wide open um, and letting everything kind of go soft into the background. So as always, Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed the video and it's helped you out, please like and subscribe. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, stick around uh, next week. We'll be back in the wildlife piece. Uh, so we'll have some exciting new wildlife with probably the 800 mil uh, from Nikon. 
uh, which is ex extremely exciting to shoot with. So thank you again. Uh, please like and subscribe. See you next week.